Gurumahagutkahirlik, and I'd uh, like to welcome the Minister to the House and to acknowledge your comments, Minister, about the, uh, indeed, what is indeed a shameful history of our treatment as a society over many decades of women and children, in particular of those citizens who were, who were incarcerated in homes like the mother and baby homes and like so many other institutions. And uh, in, a previous, in my previous life as a practitioner, I had the privilege of representing many survivors of abuse before the Residential Institution Redress Board. And I knew, I learned from so many uh, of the terrible injustice they had suffered at the hands of the state and of religious orders in those institutions. And I just want to commend Christine Buckley, Carmel MacDonald, Byrne and others who've done so much to expose the failings of the state. And it's in that context that I think all of us should also recognise the immense work that's been undertaken by the Commission, uh, the Commission of Investigation into Mother and Baby Homes, the three members, Judge Yvonne Murphy, Professor William Duncan and Professor Mary Daly, in uh, carrying out their, uh, their, their terms of reference. And I recognise the huge scale of their inquiry over a 75-year period to look into uh, the treatment, the appalling treatment of women and children in, uh, in mother and baby homes, 14 of those in four county homes, uh, and to acknowledge that they've published five interim reports to date and I think we also should recall the origins of the setting up of the Commission, the huge public outcry when, we, when, in, uh, when uh, the discovery of a mass unmarked grave at the site of the Bon Secours home in Chewham shocked the nation. The shock further for those of us who read the fifth interim report last year in 2019 at the, at the finding that uh, so uh, the burials of so many children were unaccounted for, particularly in the Bespera mother and baby home in Cork. There was one line in that fifth interim report that really stood out for me. It is not known where the vast majority of children who died in Bespera are buried. Appalling findings. What was shocking uh, in reading that interim report, as with others, was the obstructiveness of, uh, of some of those uh, involved, uh, in particular the obstructive approach taken by the Sisters of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary, who ran and the Vesper home uh, in terms of, uh, of um, providing information to the Commission. So I think we need to acknowledge the work of the Commission, the hugely important work that, that they have done and are doing, and acknowledge the importance of the context in which the Commission was set up. Having said all that, Minister, I'm deeply disappointed, as, as are my Labour colleagues and others across the House, I think, at the rushed nature of this legislation. We have serious concerns about the way in which it's come before us. Others have expressed those. We have concerns that despite the briefings, and I attended briefings with you and your officials, I thank you for that, uh, and despite the documents we've been given, the clear legal rationale for this legislation, I think, is not yet is not fully made out to us. And in particular, other colleagues have raised questions about why, given the terms of the 2004 Act, given the terms of data protection legislation already existing, why there are these provisions around, around, uh, uh, around um, the transfer of records without reduction to TUSLA and then the further provision later in the bill on the provision of the, uh, of the database to the Minister. Uh, it's, it's still not clear which subset of data is being provided to whom. And I think, Minister, we do need assurances, and I thank in particular Dr Maeve O'Rourke and Susan Lohan from the Adoption Rights Alliance and the many thousands of others who have expressed their concerns to us about this legislation. Uh, I, I do wish to ask you, Minister, for assurances in three things. First, why you as Minister can't keep an, a copy of the entire Commission database? Why is there the need for this legislation? The clear need, I think, does need to be made out to us on the record of this House. Uh, secondly, can Minister, can you assure us that uh, a data access request to the archive will be facilitated? There's a clear need for information. So many survivors, so many family members have, have expressed to us their urgent desire for information. And I've heard comments by others around privacy and around confidentiality, but there's a huge amount of information that the, that the Commission are now in possession of, which does not relate to the statements given by witnesses in, on, in the Confidential Committee. There are enormous amounts of records kept by the religious orders, provided to the Commission, kept by others, other officials, other, and I know again from the redress board experience, just the extent of information that the Commission will now be in possession of and that survivors and their families do not have access to, Minister, and that they urgently want. So it's that commitment I'm looking for in a second, uh, second assurance. And thirdly, a third assurance, again as others have said, that uh, an appropriately anonymised index to the archive will be published by you so that a debate and consultation can then be facilitated as to future unsealing of the archive 
that we can talk then about the 30-year rule. Undoubtedly, there are complexities there, but we need to talk about this, and we need to facilitate the future creation of a historical abuse record archive, appropriately maintained, sensitively and respectfully maintained, but in order to facilitate access to those who wish to have it, and indeed who, to whom we owe it uh, uh, because of our legacy of shameful treatment of women and children. We owe their survivors, their, their, um, their family members access. And, you know, unfortunately, the tenor of this bill does, is not in keeping with those assurances around information, around access to, to people's identity information. I know you, say in your, you said in your speech, and we've been told at the briefings, the bill is not about providing access. That's to be dealt with in future legislation. Well, sadly, Minister, I think that's putting the cart before the horse with respect, because we need to sort out this issue of access and information. We did attempt to do it, and your, 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 uh, your, the previous holder of your ministry, uh, Minister Catherine Zappone, made valiant attempts attempts to address this, and I do want to acknowledge that. And indeed, I worked constructively with the Minister and with officials in your department to try and ensure that we saw an appropriate balancing of the rights you've referred to, the constitutional rights to privacy and to information. Unfortunately, with the Adoption, Information and Tracing Bill 2016, which was last debated in the Shannon Committee stage in June of last year, 2019, but which then fell because we couldn't reach compromise, in that bill, as in this bill, there's undue regard to privacy rights at the expense of the right to information and identity for those persons most directly affected, the women and children and their own descendants. And at the time, thank you, thank you, last year, at the time we debated the bill, when we were trying to reach a, a compromise, I pointed out then that privacy should, rights should not be used to trump information rights. And I say that again in the context of this bill. And I will say one final thing, Minister, that we also should be debating in the context of this bill, uh, not only rights of information and identity, but also the issue of accountability of those, the state that colluded in the incarceration of women and children in homes and the enormous accountability that is still owed to the state in terms of financial redress as much as anything else by those religious orders which were so directly and shamefully responsible for the abuse of those incarcerated. We in Labour have amendments down to this bill. We are unfortunately, despite recognising the importance of the work of the Commission, we are unable to support the bill in its current form due to the way in which it's been rushed through this House, Minister. And I am sorry about that because I do want to acknowledge the importance of the work the Commissioner is doing, but I do think we need to see more respect paid to the interests and the concerns that have been expressed to us so uh, uh, eloquently by so many survivors and so many re relatives and families of survivors. And I think we d they deserve better consultation, more extensive consultation and more regard to their rights of information and their access to their identity. Gurma Haggard.